This week on Mining Minutes wrap up, corporate earnings are in full swing. We'll take a look. Coming up. We'll take a look at earnings shortly, but first a quick South Africa update. Amplat's Chief Executive Officer Cynthia Carroll's resignation Friday did little to alleviate the strike at the company's South African operations. Workers have entered another week of striking and turned down a proposal from Amplat's which included reinstatement of the 12,000 dismissed workers earlier in October and a 2,000 rand incentive to get them back to work. Tuesday, police said they arrested 13 protesters while a mine security guard is facing an attempted murder charge after shooting a protester. While nearly all of the other mining companies in the country have reached some kind of deal with their workers, the number of platinum producer in the world still seems to be far from a resolution. The company has lost 141,640 ounces of platinum since the strike began in September. It is earnings seasons and some major mining companies have been putting out their third quarter numbers. The world's largest gold producer, Barrick Gold, saw lower third quarter profit and higher costs of building its Pascua Lama mine. Adjusted earnings were $849 million, or $0.85 cents a share, down from $1.379 billion, or $1.38 per share in the third quarter of 2011. The budget for Pascua Lama has been raised to between $8 and $8.5 billion, up from $7.5 to $8 billion, mainly due to delays and higher labor costs. Production guidance for the year remains more or less the same, with the company expecting 7.3 to 7.5 million ounces of gold produced on the year. Goldcorp hit a record high in revenue, posting $1.5 billion from 617,800 ounces of gold and 9.1 million ounces of silver sales. Gold production rose about 20,000 ounces from last year's third quarter to 500,000, 92,500 ounces, while silver production jumped 2 million ounces to 8.5 million ounces. The boost came from the company's Red Lake project in Ontario and their Pescanito project in Mexico. Gold Corp remains on track to reach its 2.35 million to 2.45 million ounces of gold by year's end. Agnico Eagle had an excellent third quarter and boosted its full year production outlook yet again. Agnico raised its full year production to 1,025,000 ounces of gold from 975,000 ounces. The increase comes from the company's Meadowbank mine, which shook last year's issues and is performing very strongly, producing 110,988 ounces of gold in the third quarter. The company posted its third consecutive quarterly profit and continued to exceed expectations. Stillwater Mining did not have the kind of third quarter they were looking for, as net income fell to 11 cents per diluted share or $13 million in the third quarter. All in all, it was just a miserable quarter as cash costs were higher, production was lower, and sales were lower. The company produced 127,000 ounces of PGMs and remains on target to reach their 500,000 ounce guidance on the year. Some positive news to take away from the USA's only PGM producer is that cash costs remain below $500 an ounce and cheaper than anything coming out of South Africa. We'll finish off with Yamana, who had a record third quarter in terms of gold equivalent production. The company produced over 310,000 gold equivalent ounces, an 11% increase over last year's third quarter. While company profit was down 6% in the quarter due to low metal prices and higher production costs, Revenues reached a record $612 million from gold sales produced at the Mercedes mine. And that does it for this week's Mining Minutes wrap-up. Be sure to keep checking out Kitco.com for more earnings reports coming out this week and next. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to send them to newsfeedback at Kitco.com. I'm Alex Letourneau. Thanks for watching Kitco News.